There's something about subway stations in general that strikes me as kind of foreboding. They're, they're spooky because it's underground. And it's I mean, you got like a lot of creepy surroundings, like you're in the earth. There's clear evidence of that. And yet, we've got lights and technology, and we're clearly running the place. I don't know. I just feel like dark things happen here. Horrible things. But maybe that's just because I read too much Clive Barker. They sound great, don't they? <laughs> okay, so it clears up once you leave the station. I was like, if it did that the whole way, I was, I was like, oh my god. I mean, obviously nobody's died, so we're good. I just, if it made that noise the whole way, I, I would not stop laughing for the whole trip. Lynn is nonplussed at best. I remember it's, it's the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. It's kind of hard to miss. I can't remember the big urns, too. Yeah, but I was real little. Like, I I don't have any powerful recollections except that there were museum pins that you got. Like, it was a little button to let people know you'd paid. And it was a little blue circle. And I remember really liking the buttons and wanting to take it home. But you give it back at the desk. I'm here at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts in the cafeteria where many people are eating many things. But that's not what's important. What's important is the artwork that surrounds them, whether it be paintings, sculptures, musical instruments, or artifacts from times long since past. Here, in the center of Boston, are preserved the pieces of our history and the pieces of our self-expression that define us as a species. Indeed, there is no other creature out there that produces artwork like the human being, except Possibly the chimpanzee who is known for painting the walls of his enclosures in his own feces. Bathrooms everywhere. We have to be quiet because this is the, uh, you know, museum bathroom. But this right here is, these are the urinals. You've seen them yourself. You get your own personal stall in the bathroom. It has a little machine gun drum style toilet paper dispenser. And a handy lock. Rather stylish. Come on over here and I'll show you the one problem. The sinks are those automatic type and you've really got to want that water if you're gonna, you got to get right up in there. Okay, so when you're in a museum you have to be quiet, you have to be respectful, but you can, if need be, go to the bathroom. See you next time. So I'm wandering around in the Egyptian wing checking out artwork from the ancient world. And I come in here, and this is the room where they have all the sarcophagi. And I don't know whether they deliberately turned the thermostat down just a bit in this room, but I swear when I looked in here and I saw these sarcophagi, I actually got like a, like a mental emotional chill. So like I'm in a magic land right now. You've got to see some of this stuff. These ancient tablets covered in ancient Egyptian artwork. Little tiny mummy cases, canopic jars, wall inscriptions. There's, I think that's Thoth right there. Intricately drawn. Look at this death mask. 
details. On the canopic jars. I'm trying to be nice and quiet here so as not to disturb anybody. But this is the kind of thing about which I totally geek out. Because look at these sarcophagi. This is not just hundreds of years old. This is thousands of years old. A little bit of information for you if you slow it down there. You can check that out. Look at the detail. If you were venturing into the afterlife, don't worry. You could take your pet with you. Doesn't that look like a little goat? You can get your little cats and maybe a little dog here. They just mummified them up for you. And then you brought them along with you. Personally, I'm hoping that the pet died first and that they didn't just mummify them, but at least you have them with you, you know, wherever you're going, you and your friend stick together, and I think that's pretty cool. Naked ladies, naked ladies, naked ladies, naked ladies. A cool beast. A little monster there. Because this room, again, is following through on this ancient world. Weapons. So I don't want to point any accusatory fingers. All I'm going to say is that Aristotle must have been hanging out with some Viking dudes. Jesus had days like these. That's a Robotop, Robocop 2 quote for you. Oh, this clock. Oh, this clock. I don't know how they got that bird to sit on our hand for the, for the picture. I do I like the little dog here. I was like, hey, are you going to feed me? Can I eat that bird? There's a continuing theme of people posing with their pets. That is most definitely a sugar glider on like a gold chain. That's kind of dope. I wouldn't have expected early Americans to have them. The shark is dreadful. It's a, it's a monstrous creature. My friends, we have entered my part of the museum. Animals everywhere. Animals, splendorous animals. From ducks and kiwis and cool little lions. This little squirrel chewing on an apple. Goats and deer, peacocks to regular cocks, back to peacocks again. And of course, the mighty ram. Looks like 40016 from Havadaya. A greyhound for your children to climb on. This magnificent giraffe with his glassy eyes. And last but not least, our little friend, the chicken. why, if you like art related around animals, you'll love this part of the Boston Museum of Fine Art. Well, hi there. I didn't see you come in. I was just sitting down in my brand new living room. I thought you might <laughs> enjoy the view. Oh, these, just, just a few pieces that I had commissioned. Some lovely curio cases, uh, a few velvety soft seats. You know, <laughs> nothing special, just the usual of where I come from. Perhaps you'll come back and join me again sometime. We can take a look at my fabulous collection of musical instruments. That's a player piano right there. You sit down and you play it. No, don't do that. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a masterpiece. Leave it alone. But I want to show you my favorite painting in this whole wing. It's right over here. Now, it appears to be a whole family because there's a strong family resemblance between all of them. I have noticed some similar <laughs> facial features going on on these various characters. Maybe it's the man family? I, I don't know. Lynn pointed out that Paul Revere looks like an old-timey Jack Black. So I think I'll end there with old timey Jack Black. I love this grandfather clock, oh my god. With its horrific son staring at you. Okay, okay. Is that a beep for me? Okay, I didn't do it.
I'm going this way. I've got a little too close there.